This is case number 58306, The NASA Files. We have an unidentified flying object. Since the beginning of the manned space programs in the early 1960s, UFO researchers have claimed that NASA missions are seeing UFOs in space. Cameras aboard NASA spacecraft photograph and videotape numerous large solid objects. According to some experts, these objects appear to accelerate, change direction, and even evade danger. NASA's explanations say that these are images of ice crystals or other normal space debris. But others are convinced that NASA is not disclosing the entire truth. Don't you guys find it strange that NASA is not interested in UFOs at all? NASA has a limited budget. And UFOs is just considered to be so unlikely that NASA put their resources towards other areas they feel are more likely to yield fruit. They say they're not interested in UFOs, and yet they've got all this footage of strange things flying around. What exactly do we have to do to prove that there is a UFO cover-up at NASA? We've got to find people who are credible witnesses inside NASA, and we've got to find the documents that say NASA knows there are UFOs. That's what we have to investigate. Ted wants a smoking gun, let's go look for a smoking gun. But is there an explanation for what the team believes is the most compelling NASA video yet? February 25th, 1996. A 12 mile long tether accidentally breaks and floats away from the shuttle Columbia. When the tether is between 75 and 100 miles away, the shuttle camera records dozens of small orbs suddenly surrounding it. The standard explanation is space debris, but why would debris cluster around an object? And why does it seem to keep circling the tether? See those little uh, snowflake or those disc shapes going yeah. right behind right. the tether? This right. UFO must have been at least 100 miles across flying behind this tether. NASA maintains its only mission is to explore outer space. But some claim NASA is suppressing evidence of UFOs. The team has been analyzing official NASA video taken during space shuttle missions to investigate these stories. STS-48 captures an object that changes direction in an instant. And STS-114 films an object traveling a very unusual path. But in the case of STS-75, the team finds the footage so compelling that they seek insight from experiments producer John Tyndall. Uh, today we're going to demonstrate a difficulty that a uh, uh, three dimensions uh, being captured by two dimensional cameras. John believes this experiment will shed light on the images captured by STS-75. A tether broke off from the space shuttle and was seemingly surrounded by small orbs. He has set up a spatial representation of the tether and the windows of the shuttle. All right, now you can see that's the tether. It's broken loose. See those little uh, snowflake or those disc shapes going yeah. right behind right. the tether. Right. Now, other ones are appearing to be in the foreground, which leads uh, a lot of folks to believe that they were real and they were out there. These particles may be nothing more than ice and debris from around the ship that are out of focus because a telephoto lens was used. NASA maintains that this is nothing more than uh, ice and debris that's around the ship that's out of focus because this is a telephoto lens. Now the camera 
was using a lens, a telephoto lens, which incorporated a mirror. This hole that's in the center of this mirror uh, would also leaves an artifact, the same artifact that you see in the discs. Light illuminates these objects from behind, and then this light bounces off the mirrored lens. The objects will now appear to have the form of the lens, even though this is not their actual shape. This can be seen by Tyndall's example. He has prepared a small piece of fishing line that is backlit by a green light. However, when the line is passed in front of the camera, it doesn't look like fishing line. It takes the form of a circle with a hole in the center. Sunlight was coming across and hitting ice crystals and, and backlighting them and causing them to illuminate. Any shape that's around the lens of a camera or around the optical path, will, it will impinge on those circles of confusion. But even if the object's shape can be explained, why do they appear to pass behind the tether and circle it? John has set up a mock tether inside a three-dimensional environment and will show how this optical illusion occurs. You see how overexposed the tether is at this point? Mm -hmm. Even though this is in the foreground, it gives the illusion that it's passing behind. The image on STS-75's camera is overexposed, meaning that objects appear brighter than they actually are. This gives the illusion that they are behind the tether when they are actually in front. So you mimicked the UFO? Yeah. <laughs> OK. I think John Tyndall did a good job demonstrating a number of potential optical aberration effects that you might see in the conditions of, of taking photographic or videographic uh, imagery through the space shuttle windows. The team successfully recreated some images from the STS footage, but others still remain unexplained. The only source, besides NASA, left to offer any further information are the astronauts themselves. It is these reports which leave UFO researchers and other experts without a solid answer to their biggest question. Why does NASA continually avoid the subject of UFOs? We've got documents here uh, the Condon report, uh, the, uh, the testimony of uh, Ed White and James McTivitt, the UFOs they saw. I think I've moved beyond uh, believing that there are mere contradictions in NASA's UFO policies to believing that there may, in fact, be some kind of UFO cover-up. Cover-up at NASA? Uh, I doubt it. I I'm not sure there is that much on record to cover up at NASA, besides some of these sort of very spurious videos and, and a few testimonies. What about the testimony of the astronauts themselves? I mean, can you ignore that? You can't ignore it, no. Has NASA already gained knowledge of extraterrestrial intelligence? The team believes that until all NASA photographs and video evidence are released and open discussions on the events are allowed, the NASA files will remain open.